Libraries were very important to me growing up. Um, I grew up in the Bronx in the, during the 50s and the 60s, and it was a place that we would go to uh, on some days after school, but a lot during the summer that, um, first of all, it was a cool little red building in our neighborhood that just felt like home. And the librarians were very welcoming. You could stay as long as you want, read all of the great books, and then decide what you were going to take home. And so friends would uh, come and we'd uh, sometimes compete over the same book and, uh, or if you didn't reach your limit or if your friend reached their limit, try to encourage them to take out a book that you wanted to read. We had to sense uh, how important it was to get the books back on time or to come in to check them out again. And we'd spend time reading. We kind of like finish the day's play or maybe at lunchtime and we'd sit around on the, on the steps of uh, each other's building or go to the rooms and read books. It was a great thing. We got that encouragement from our teachers. You had to have a library card. In the school that I went to, it was kind of like a requirement that you had a library card. So it was a place where we realized that anything was possible. Um, where we could be explorers, where we could be astronauts, uh, where we could be firemen, where we could be teachers, where we could uh, go back in time and in history. Um, it was a porthole for all of those things. To know that there was a safe environment, but real important, a community, where you would go there and you would see other kids from your neighborhood and other kids from school that were reading, that were hanging out in the library, made it really cool. Um, I think the idea of doing things in a community and doing things where there is a safe space and where there are events going on um, really created a special place for me uh, in my world of growing up so that our local library kind of fits into the warm memories of my life along with grandma's Thanksgiving dinners and playing softball in the vacant lot of across the street. That library on 229th Street in the Bronx fits right in there with the, with the uh, childhood memories that are my favorite. Uh, there was a, a Mrs. Johnson uh, who was uh, the librarian at uh, the Williams Bridge Branch and there was a school librarian uh, named Mrs. Turner who was also a great woman and, and um, fostered a real love of reading and books. Um, and, and I spent time in prison and one of the things um, that was an, that's, that, that's an important uh, memory in prison was that prison library and I worked in the prison library and how we would try to get other prisoners in to read and also my early days of uh, being in orientation seeing an older prisoner named Mr. Cody who pushed a library cart around who had books there from the library that he'd bring around to the guys in orientation he would ask you if you wanted a book sometimes people would say yes sometimes people would say no and he gave this great speech and he would say you know, you're here whether you want to be here or not, and you got a little time to do. And the key thing is, you could let this time serve you, you could serve this time, or you can let this time serve you. And behind that advice, if anything registered about that advice, came a book. And you understood that part of letting that time serve me was to read as much as you can and take advantage of that prison library. Well, I. Uh, uh, use my library for research. I'm a professor, professor at Columbia University, uh, so there are libraries on campus, but there's still a joy of going to those local libraries, uh, the libraries in Harlem, where I'll go to do some research, where I took my children where they were younger, and where I go now to, uh, to give talks and poetry workshops with young people. Still very, very an important part of my life and I think a very important part of the Harlem community where I live. Oh, I have a strong opinion about it. I think that, you know, it, it's interesting that in tough times that the first cuts come to places like, you know, schools and libraries. Um, this idea of safe space, this idea of reading being cool, this idea of being in a community of reading and a community of learning is vital. It's vital to the educational and cultural health of all communities. And we have to fight for that. That's important. You know, we talk about health care. We, we have to talk about education care and reading care as part of the wholeness of a human being and the development of our, of our children and the health of our communities. You know, one of the things that, uh, that libraries and reading helps one do is to think of the world in bold and different ways. Um, the students who are in their reading books are our leaders of tomorrow. They are those educators, the doctors, the lawyers, the policy makers, 
and they need a full range of what was going on. So banning books is like banning part of the brain. Um, you know, it's, it's telling people that, uh, that, that censorship is more important than critical thinking. We need people that think critically. We need people that understand tolerance. We need people with imagination. And that comes when the mind is allowed to explore wherever it can go. Well, I have, uh, I'm on tour with my book, Panther Baby. Uh, and and uh, uh, I'm also writing a screenplay and starting to uh, think of ideas for the next book.